and welcome back to my video tutorials. Hi guys, as you can see from my YouTube channel I tend to train on a lot of assistive software. Now I'm looking for software that's free that students can use or anyone can use because not everyone's got money to spend 130 200 quid on a bit of software. So I've been putting together a little collection of free software that can help students and I found this. Actually I was recommended this by a very interesting and smart lady. So I took a look at it and you know what, she's absolutely right, it's a fabulous free program. What it does with you, it will read back text, you can import from different formats, you can save as an audio file, you've got a great spell checker. It just will help you with your essay work and revision. So let's have a little look at it. So what I'm going to start with is the voices top left hand corner. You see we have stuff called SAPI4 and SAPI5. This stands for Speech Application Programming Interface and this was developed by Microsoft a while ago and it's a speech synthesis for Windows applications. Now they're separated because they're not compatible together the voices. Now when you select one you want, it's up to you, it's personal preference, then click the drop down menu underneath and then choose a the voice that you like. I kind of like Hazel, I tend to stick with her, but you see there's many voices there you can try. What I like about this is also, you can change the basic options like the rate of the readback, and also the pitch, and also the volume. We go to SAPI 4, and then choose a voice there. I want to go to English American Default, and select Properties. You've got so many great options for changing how that voice sounds, and you can even save the settings with Save Speaker or save speaker as. Stuff you don't normally get like pitch fluctuation, roughness or breathlessness. Pretty good little options that you can modify that voice with and try and find a voice that you feel comfortable with and can listen back. Definitely worth a little look at. But I'm going to choose Sappy 5 and I want to stick with Hazel. I love Hazel. And the first thing we'll do is input a document. Now I've got a PDF here that I did earlier. So I'm going to click this little button here that will open up a PDF. And on my desktop, I should have a PDF near the bottom, and it's called Space. Just something I copied and pasted from Wikipedia. Click Open as an example. And as you see, the text is automatically put into this window, and you can see that there's words that are highlighted red. These indicate spelling errors. But as we know, they're not always spelling errors. Some of the words could be names, so we need to add to your vocabulary. But I don't want them highlighted at the moment because they're putting me off on me reading. So if I come up to View, select show and I'm going to untick spelling errors that's better now click the cursor at the beginning of what you want read back I'll show you how to change the settings in a minute to that and I'm going up to the green button and I'm now going to press this it. article is about the general framework of distance and direction for the space beyond Earth's atmosphere I'm going to click pause let's just say I need to stop for the moment I want to come back at a later date so you've got great options here for bookmarking so I can click insert quick bookmark once I click that button the button next to it becomes available it means I can jump to that bookmark so for example if I click stop click back at the beginning and I'm going to jump to that bookmark and I can use that button we'll jump straight there so I can carry on reading off where I left off see outer space so I can carry on reading on well I can carry on reading on by clicking the playback space button. for the keyboard key really handy option by the way, use this button here, I kind of like as well. This will insert name bookmarks. So you might have a number of bookmarks, for example. You might have come down to, for example, modern and stop there. Then we click add bookmark and we can give that a name. I'm just going to call it modern, but you can call it chapter one, paragraph three, or whatever information you want, obviously. Click OK. And then I could carry on reading with the playback button. Physicists usually consider it with time. Again, I might want to add another bookmark. Click on that button there and click plus. And again, I can do bookmark. I just did bookmark too. You kind of get the idea of that anyway. And then, click on it again. You come back at a later date. Check your name bookmarks and jump the cursor straight to them. And then you can click play Time to carry on playing. To be part of a really great for doing your revision or reading. Or even research, whatever you want to use that for. Now as you can see it's reading back in blue, which is great, but some people prefer different colours to read back in. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up the top here. So we're going to come up the top here, we've got view, and I want you to select language and make sure it's on your preferred language, which is English, and then choose fonts and colours. 
This is where you can change the font and colours and how it reads back. You can currently see I've got text colour black and I've got highlight colour blue so you can change those colours depending on what you want. Again, personal preference. If you're not happy with the font, you can change the font you want here as well in the size. So make sure you choose the correct option that you feel most comfortable with. Click OK. Now I'm just going to go back to the spell check again. So go up to view, show, and I'm going to show spelling errors. Now when you first use Balaboka and you use that spell check option, it might not come up. If it doesn't highlight red, it means you haven't got the spell check installed. You need to install it from the website. Let me show you where that is now and how to do that. So open up your preferred browser and here we go. And there's the website address. And I recommend downloading it from this website as well so you know you're just downloading the program with no with no add-ons or, or browser hijacks. Scroll down. We also have here you'll notice different voices that you can download and even a skin pack if you're required to make it look exactly how you want. We have voices there again. Keep scrolling you should come to an option which says spell checking. Select your language, so I'm selecting English and then it will ask you to open up or save. It opens up as a WinRAR or compressed file, be it WinSIP, depending on what you've got on your computer. Click close. There's my hand spell English. I'm going to double tap it and then it goes through the process of installing. So click next. I'm just going to set up English United Kingdom. Click next and then click finish. Close your compression tool and open up Balabolka. And then you might even notice if you go back up to view and go to show again, it might not still show your spelling errors underlying red. Don't worry, if you restart the program, then they will show up. Make sure you go to view, show, and then it definitely show you your, your spelling errors. Now again with spelling errors it depends, not all with spelling errors, some are named, some you want to add to your vocabulary. So all you do is go over it. So we've got first option, framework. So if I right click that, it gives me a suggestion of the correct spelling, framework. So I can left click that and it changes it. Now if you come across a word that you want to add to your vocabulary, it's not a problem. Let's try, I think there's a hyphen meant to be between them, but I'm not sure. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to actually add this word to the dictionary. You're going to come up with scientific words or, or medical terminologies you just want to add quickly into your, so it doesn't come up as a spelling error. And that's how easy it is to do. And again, if we right click direction from, we can then change the correct grammar for that as well. Now, if it's still showing up stuff, I mean, you go through them or you can always go to few and then untick the spelling for now and go back at a later date. So let's have a look more at some of the options in Balabolka. This first option here, we can save your document that you've just done. You might have edited it or typed it in there. So if I click save, and then we can choose to save it onto your desktop, wherever you'd like to save that. Now, image option. Now this PDF I actually copied from Wikipedia, and there was an image in it. And we can't see the image in that. So if I click image option, it will show the images that exist within that PDF, and there it is. And it's a JPEG now. So it's taking a JPEG, and I can zoom in and out. and even save if I require. A great way to assess the PDFs as well, images. Next option, save audio file. So if I was to click that button, I can choose to save all that as an audio file by giving it a name and choosing the format I wish to save it as. MP3 I find is fine, and wave as well, click cancel. Now the button next to it is a little bit different. This will split and convert to audio files on keywords you're using or depending on how you want to do it. For example, if I was to click at the end of a sentence, here we go, and do two clear sentences spaces, and then I come up to the option here where it says split and convert to audio files. First I need to create an output file folder, click browse. I'm going to create a new one. I'm just going to call this space. And there we go. So I've got my tester folder and I've got a space folder in there. Choose the format you want to save it as. Again, I'll leave it as MP3 compressed. There's my current voice I chose earlier, which is Hazel Desktop. And all my files are going to come out namespace. Also, it's going to number them. 
So if there's five of them, one to five. So I've got the starting output file sequence number one. You can change that number to three starting from three upwards. Now the important part here. Now I can choose a couple of things here. So let me get rid of that word there. I could do by, you see I created two blank sentences. So if I click that button there, by two empty lines in succession, that will then split the audio file. So if there's something you're reading and you need to break up, for example, it could be slides that you need to break up or different topics. Create two blank spaces between them lines, then use this option here and it will split them all into separate audio files. Also, you've got a nice option here called by specified keywords and input text. So let's find keywords in there. And this is great because you can break up information in the keywords you're looking for. How about physicist? Actually, it's physicists. And we'll separate that with a comma. Let's look for another keyword. Philosophical. That'll do for now. So drag this up. And I'm going to click test to check how many word keywords there are that you can split up. Click test. There's three of them. So let me click split and convert. And there's the three keywords and sentences it's split up. And you can see here it's taking those words. For example, if I move this over, these sentences will carry on from where those keywords were. So what I can do now is choose what I want or I don't want. I'm happy with that. And it tells you the size of them there, so I just click split. It will take all those files, rename them one to three, and put them into my folder on my desktop for me. Then I can upload onto my iPod phone and listen to it. By the way, if you have trouble uploading stuff onto your phone and you're not great on the Mac or iTunes or just have trouble with the cable, why not just upload the files to Dropbox, OneNote, and then just assess them from your phone and play them back. Easy option and easy to upload and delete when you don't want them. So, let's go to my desktop and we should have those three files in there. Space, and there they are. One, two, three of my keywords. Open them up. This article is about the general frame. And then it will play back for me. That's simple. Another great little option to use on the audio option. We have the playback option I've shown you, just to let you know as well, really useful. If you open up Internet Explorer, I'm going back to the Balaboka website. If you choose to highlight some text, and then click Control C to copy into clipboard, or right click and copy, we can then use the option, because you copy that into memory, top here, which will read clipboard aloud. Balabolka is a text-to-speech TTS. And then it's reading whatever I've copied up into clipboard. Also, you've got another great option here, which reads selected text if you want, so you can highlight specific text you want, and then click the read button rather the than reading it The concept of all. space is considered to be a fund, which is really useful. Now, this option here, I've got your voice options here. It's showing. If you don't want that shown, you can click this configure voice option and get rid of it, so you can just see what you're actually reading. But I'm going to leave that on for now. And again, panel of dictionaries, and this will list your panel of dictionaries. And as you can see, for a program that's totally free, it's quite powerful and really useful. So there's a lot of options to this. Just one thing I want you to check. go to options, and I want you to select settings. So you can set up how you want Balabolka to work. For example, start reading aloud from position of cursor, or if you put the cursor, it will start reading. Or you might prefer, if you're reading a lot of documents, beginning of text each time. So when you click play, it will read from the beginning of text and not from where the cursor left off. And that's the same for paragraph. Also, you can start saving audio file again from the beginning of text automatically, which kind of makes sense, but you want to just save parts of a paragraph and that. You can do it when a cursor is positioned. I prefer to leave it on beginning of text. Again, next option will echo back words for you. So you type in a letter. Balaboka speech will then read that back for you. Same with words or paragraphs so you can hear what you're typing. Depending on your typing speed, that can be a bit disconcerting because it kind of puts you off as you're typing. For some people it works wonders. Also, when you start Balaboka, you can choose to open up the previous document you're working on or reading or a new one or open document and read aloud straight away. Reading, again go through these settings, quite a lot here to look at, but a lot of them are quite quite straightforward. Pauses between each sentence as it's reading, so you can slow it down or speed it up in the sentences. You've got your text option here, again your choice. Hotkeys, really important this. If you've got multiple applications open, another application open, then you can use global hotkeys. 
This means these global hotkeys will not interfere with any other shortcut keys, for example in Word, PowerPoint, Adobe Reader, whatever application you're using. These will be independent to that, so you can use these shortcut keys without causing any issues. There's your basic shortcut keys. Again, Control M, for example, new document in Word could interfere with other applications. That's why they give you the option of the hotkeys and global ones. Buttons, you can choose what you want on your toolbar at the top. It's quite a few options here. Again, have a little look at them and go through them all. Some you use. I suppose spell check will be quite handy to have on there instead of having to go up to the toolbar at the top and a drop down menu. Font and colours could be another one that would be useful, I think. Again, personal preference, even translate could be useful, or a list of spelling names will be another one that would be good. Files. This is what you can possibly convert such files to plain text without using Microsoft Office and this is the format it can actually convert between. Rules, again have a look at that, anything they're useful and then voices, you can see I'm using Hazel at the moment and I'm using the speech application program in interface number 5 and remember they're separated because they're not compatible with one another. So make sure you set up exactly how you want. There's a few basics to get you up running on the program and again there's so much more to it so download it and have a go and see what you think thanks for watching